Welcome to the Ojai Valley Trail. Bike again. Let's go for a ride. The Ojai Valley Trail. In this video, what you need to know about this trail, how you can rent a bike, the helpful things to know, and some fun facts about traveling in Ojai and about Ojai that you might find interesting. And if you're new here, yo, I'm Christine Lozada with Where in the World is Seattle to make travel videos every week. Help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. This has been a really fun ride. Let's jump on some bikes and let's get straight to it. Let's kick this off with five helpful things to know about riding your bike on the Ojai Valley Trail. The first is that this trail is nine miles long and it goes from Ventura to Ojai along Highway 33. In this video, you're gonna see me ride from Ventura at the starting point out to Ojai and then I'll turn around and come back, but mostly showing footage on the way out. And if you're wondering about the exact start point, check the info in the description because I included the Google map for it. The second helpful thing to know is when you're taking this path from Ventura to Ojai, it's slightly uphill. You can't really tell from this footage, but it's a gradual climb, which means on the upside, you'll be a little bit faster coming back. The next helpful thing to know is that this is a pretty long bike path. Nine miles is a long ways. And if you wanna do the entire ride, you can consider getting either a regular bike and doing a portion of it or being aggressive and doing all of it. I rented bikes from the Ventura Bike Depot. They have all kinds of bikes available from tandems to bikes with strollers, to regular bikes, to beach cruisers, to e-bikes, etc. But I picked up the e-bike that I'm renting and riding here from Ventura Beach e-bikes. Those guys are super nice and they're located right in the heart of downtown Ventura. Info on them is in the description below. What's wrong with it? Ooh. That's what you call a heavy assist. <laughs> what was awesome was this bike went up to 26-ish miles an hour. And the battery lasted just fine for the entire ride going all the way out and all the way back. Another helpful thing to note is that the trail is asphalt all the way. So you're not gonna be doing any off-roading on the dirt. So if you're riding a road bike, you should be fine on the tires front, but there are some parts where like there's roots coming up in the road or there's just trees and other items on the road. So I actually had my rollerblades with me on this trip. This is not a path I wanna try to rollerblade on, but it is one that I would ride either a regular bike, a road bike, or an electric bike on. And the last helpful thing to know is that you're not going to find just bikers on this trail. You can expect to see people walking, uh, strollers, joggers, um, and on a parallel path to some parts of this bike path, you'll see horseback riders. Ooh, here's one more bonus tip. Especially when you get up to the Ojai area, you'll find more places where you can kind of stop and pull over with your bike and go to the winery. I love the Topa Mountain Winery that's up there. They have a dedicated place to put your bike. You'll find restaurants that have bike parking, etc. But kind of on the way out, as you're bordering Highway 33 going up, it's more of just a ride all the way through and less about kind of stopping and going in places. So it's really once you get to the Ojai side of things that you're kind of making those stops, etc. But on this side, uh, really just on the way out, you're on the way out. By the way, if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button, consider subscribing, and don't forget about the full written blog post as well as the video about top things to do in Ojai to help you have the best trip possible. I'm gonna do something different in which I'm gonna bring you through some of the things that I love to look at as a traveler when I'm traveling to places. This includes things like fun facts you might not know about Ojai or where the name comes from or the current population and demographics. I like to know whom I'm traveling among. So I'm going to share some of these things as we take this ride. So that's coming up. One of the things that you'll feel right away when you travel to Ojai is how small and how quaint this place is. And it's one of the things that's really lovely about spending time here. It's very quiet and everything is very close by because this place is only around 10 miles by three miles. It's pretty small. And one of the things about it being small, and these numbers are from 2020, but the population of Ojai is actually, can you guess? It's only 7,600. That's pretty small. 
And so it's a, it's a very small, quaint town and you'll feel that way and you'll also feel super welcome. I had the opportunity to play pickleball at some pickup games with some of the locals and immediately everyone is very welcoming, very nice. I had no idea that tennis was a really big thing in Ojai. They hold one of the tournaments here each year that's pretty popular as well. Let's talk about some of the history of Ojai because it will give context as to its kind of small town feel. Because one of the things that I think is interesting is that chain stores are actually prohibited by city ordinance uh, to keep the town like ha having that small and unique feel and they do a good job of that. But the name Ojai is derived from the Mexican era Rancho Ojai. And so the word itself means moon. And one of the things I've started to learn as I've been traveling to Ojai over the years is how spiritual and how health focused this place is. Ojai has actually given itself the nickname of Shangri-La to kind of reference its spiritual and health focus um, of this area. So I thought that was interesting. Ooh, and one other thing about the name, uh, meaning moon, it's it's an Indian term, and it's because the there were Native Americans that originally inhabited this area, um, and so its name, its current name of Ojai, was adopted in, the, in like early 1900s, and then Ojai was incorporated as a city in 1921. When I'm traveling to a place, I always like to observe and people watch who's around me. And it's kind of on two fronts. One, who's traveling here, and two, who lives here? And so one of the things I got a sense of when I was here is that most people are traveling in from somewhere in California, driving in and spending a short amount of time here. It seems like most people will come for you know a couple days or a weekend. It's not really, depending on how you're traveling and what you're doing, it's not really a place that you spend tons and tons of time in, but it's great for a short trip. And so I noticed a lot of people kind of coming in from the surrounding areas in LA or in Santa Barbara. Um, I was probably one of the further drives from San Diego, um, but most people are local-ish to the area that are coming in to spend a weekend or a few days. And as I research info on like who lives here and what is like one of the things I'm always fascinated by is um, you know, I'm, I'm riding a bike and I'm looking at the houses that are around me. What is the median property value? In 2020, it was 740,000 is the median property value in Ojai. And in 2020, the median household income in Ojai is 75,000. I think it's fun to get context of whom you're traveling amongst. And I think it's also interesting just to look up what, what famous people have lived in Ojai. And so I was, um, I I was looking this up and people like Anne Hathaway, Natalie Portman, Jamie Dornan, uh, e even Reese Witherspoon have had homes here in Ojai. That's kind of interesting to look at. Let's talk a few more travel tips because yes, I have my video of top things to do, places to eat, where to stay in Ojai on my channel. But if you're just wondering kind of like, what's the high level of what I need to know about Ojai? So one, we kind of know it's a place to spend just a couple days. The second thing is you can swing super high and super low on prices of where you stay. You can go super luxe and fancy at the Ojai Valley Inn, or you could stay somewhere more unique. My sister loves staying at Caravan Outpost, or you can stay at a very inexpensive inn. I stayed at Chantico Inn for just one night. All of that info is in the full blog post. You can find that in the description below. So that's kind of on the how long to stay and where to stay front. What would I do if I were coming back? I would definitely recommend going to the wineries. Uh, there are about a half dozen of them. It's it's really fun to, especially if you have a bike, to ride along this bike path and park your bike at the um, Topa Mountain Winery. And a lot of those wineries are just a couple blocks away from each other. So you can kind of just walk from one to the other. There are also some really lovely restaurants in the area. Um, and to be honest, I am a big fan of Yelp. I've been Yelp elite for over 10 years. So I got that black badge on my profile, um, but I love using Yelp to find some of the top restaurants. One of the places I'm really curious about is the Duchess. Uh, I went there for coffee, but they have some unique food items on the menu. So I will be back to check that out. And then I would say the other thing is hiking. There's actually a lot of hikes in this area that are quite pretty. 
um, and kind of overlooking the valley. And they go from very easy to very strenuous. And so when I come back, I plan on doing more of those hikes. There is a lake in the area. I think it's Casitas Lake, and I'm curious about it. Which, by the way, if you have helpful tips about Ojai, please add them in the comments. We're all a community. Um, but I'm curious about taking some time to go onto the lake. If you watch my channel, you know I love being on boats. Um, but that's how I'm kind of thinking about my next trip. If you got some value out of this, choose that like button, consider subscribing, and don't forget to check all the info in the description below. And I will see you in the next one. Ciao.